On today's episode, I'm going to make this mud kitchen. Stick around. Roll the intro. Hi, I'm Sean. Welcome to Sean in the Shed. Mud kitchen, gonna use some treated timber that's up on the wood rack. It's from an old project. I think it's actually from the um, hammock, you know, the garden hammock we made, so it's um, some 4 by 2 So I'm gonna pull it down off the off the racking now and get it uh, ripped down. On this video, I'm gonna be making a children's mud kitchen for the garden. The actual dimensions of the kitchen will be 36 inches wide across the front of the piece, 30 inches tall, and the actual worktop will be 16 inches from the floor. I squared off the sides of the 4x2 and then split it down the centre to give me two roughly 2x2 two two pieces of treated timber. I took the pieces of 2x2 two two treated timber and using my square enough from Peter Millard at the 10 minute workshop I set the side pieces up into two letter H frames. I pre-drilled these and screwed them in with some decking screws to secure them in place. I think if I was to make any more of these, I'd probably create myself a little jig to set the legs and the cross member pieces into instead of having to play around with my clamps all the time. Using my trusty sustainer as a um, jig and clamping system, I connected the two letter H frames with some cross members to make the basic structure of the kitchen. I ripped one of my 2x2 two two pieces in half to allow me to just add two face pieces to allow the shelf to sit on for the base. I connected these with my nail gun with a couple of brad nails. After a little tinkering and fettling, um, this is now square. Um, I noticed that as I was putting the last runners on the bottom that I noticed that one of the um, timbers across here had a non 90 degree enter it, it must have been the end of the actual piece of wood so I just squared it off taking a couple of mil off the end of it which has squared it all up now and everything looks fine um, against the set square. So now to sort out the top piece and the work top and the inserts. Stick around. For the work top for the kitchen I use some off cuts of butcher's block work top where, which was lying around a workshop. So it's seen better days, it's had a bit of warp in here and there, so cutting this down to a 36 inch piece for a children's mud kitchen seemed like a good idea. I always get asked how my saw performs with dense hardwoods, and you see this is fairly simple. It goes through the butcher's block, this is solid oak, and it has no problems. Using my trim router I cut out a small circle which was the same diameter as a dog bowl I picked up with a copper effect. Um, I probably could have used my half inch router instead of the, the trim router as it started to struggle at times to go through the oak. To coat the 
kitchen frame itself I used some Ron Seal Fains paint in a, a lovely sage. I applied several coats of this, allowing it to dry in between each coat. Time to cut some more circles out using the trusty old jig, which has seen better days. This time we're cutting some uh, half inch ply. This is just to make the cooker hobs. So I cut out two large and two smaller ones. This will be for the, the little uh, cooker effect on top of the worktop. As this was a leftover piece of ply, I didn't want to waste anything. So I use it my hole saw and I cut out the four um, knobs which will sit on the front of the cooker to allow the children to play with them. I put all four knobs on a drill bit and using a piece of sandpaper and my Action Man Kung Fu grip I decided to sand them all off in one go, try not to burn my hand with the friction. Time to paint the hobs and the actual knobs to go in front of the, the cooker hobs. I didn't have any heat resistant paint and it was for children. I didn't think they'd realise so I just used a can of cheap black spray paint I had lying around the workshop. Since then I have managed to get hold of some heat resistant paint but I don't think they're going to get it too hot on the mud kitchen. I've attached the butcher's block wood uh, worktop piece with some um, decking screws from underneath so they're nice and flush inside. The back piece and the shelf on the bottom are both pieces of pallet boarding which I've sanded down uh, to about 100 grit on all sides. Put three pieces across the bottom as a nice simple shelf and at the back just a backboard made of the four pieces and they've all been uh, nailed on with the nail gun, um, nothing too fancy there. I've attached the, the cooker with um, four screws into the worktop and then utilizing the, the actual hob rings, I've used some contact adhesive to cover the um, screw holes up with. So they're now in place, so you can't see them. The cooker knobs are off cuts of plywood, which I've uh, cut small circles out with. And I've attached them with some pocket hole screws um, because they're nice, nicely domed and silver and it just gives them a different look and feel on the front. You all right? What's this? <laughs> so Tommy, do you like it? Do you like the kitchen? Is it nice? <laughs> As you can see, I've finished the backboard and the bottom with some yacht varnish. And I've put loads of IKEA children's kitchen um, accessories with it just to give it that little extra touch. Um, there's some more videos down the bottom corner and the subscribe button in the top corner. See you next time on Sean the Shed. Tommy, say bye. Bye.